Okay, we have today a really interesting integral. This one's from the Vienna Integration B 2024, problem 34. We have the integral from zero to pi over two, sine 2024x over sine x dx. Okay, I actually know a few different ways to do this, and so I might do another video later. But for this video, I couldn't help but notice the similarity between what we have right here and our formula down here for the Dirichlet kernel. Now, we are going to run into a little bit of trouble because, first of all, here in the denominator are the angles x over 2, and here we just have an x. And then also, when we go to split this up, what you really need here is what we want is that we want this to be an odd coefficient in order for this to work nice. So we're going to need to do something with that as well. And so I think that's what I'm going to start with is let's just take this numerator and see if we can manipulate that in order to get an odd coefficient out of it. So what I can do for this, for 2024, I can break it up and write it as 2023x plus x, so we're not changing it, but then we can use the angle addition formula for sine on this. So doing that, what's going to happen is we now, we're going to have, with the formula, this is going to become sine 2023x times cosine x. Then plus, we're going to reverse the angle and we get sine x cosine 2023x. But then what we can do is let's bring this sine x back into it because then we'll split this up into two fractions. But doing it that way, over here in the second one, we get cancellation. So doing it this way, we can actually break this up into two integrals like this. I'm not worried, we'll come back to this one, but now this integral right here has become something easy that we can deal with and just kind of get out of the way. So let's go ahead down here and just do this one. So we're gonna be integrating zero to pi over two of cosine 2023 x dx. Integrate that, we're gonna have sine 2023 x, but we need a 2023 to come out here in the denominator. We just need to evaluate this from zero to pi over two. Evaluating this at zero is just gonna be zero. When you plug pi over two in here, it's a little tricky, right? The sine of 2023 is such a big number. Sine of 2023 pi over two, that's gonna actually be minus one. That's gonna be like at the three pi over two value. The same. That's actually gonna be the same value as three pi over two. So we're gonna get minus one there over 2023. So this is gonna be part of our solution right here. I'm just gonna write this down so we can come back to it later after we calculate all this stuff. Okay, so now for this other integral, we've actually fixed this where we now have odd coefficients here and here. So that's gonna work out well with this when we do a u substitution, but we kinda of introduced another problem is now we've got a cosine in it. So anyway, what I can do to try to get this into this form over here is a u substitution. So specifically, I want x to become like x over two. So if I do x equal to u over two, that's gonna make the denominator work. Solve for x, we have u equal to two x. Take a derivative, then du is just two dx. I'll set up this du value by just multiplying in a two right here and multiplying by one half, so I'm not changing it. And now we'll just go ahead and substitute so we have our one half up front. So first, let's update our bounds, plugging in pi over two here. Two times pi over two is just gonna be pi for the upper bound. Plug in a zero and we just get zero. Then for sine 2023x, for x we plug in u over two. I'm gonna actually split this up. So for 2023, u over two, I can look at 2023 as 2022 plus one. So then when we distribute in here, what we're gonna be left with is this is gonna become 10, 11, u, and then the other part's gonna become a half. This is gonna become, I can write this as u over two. So updating this, we'll write this as sine 10, 11, u plus u over two, just trying to get it into this format here. And then here for the denominator, it's gonna be just like this. This is gonna become sine u over two, and the cosine will become cosine u over two du. But now at this point, this thing right here is perfectly set up to use our formula. The n value is gonna be this 10, 11, the coefficient on the x, or in this case, u. So using this, it's all gonna transform into this down here. So we'll have our one half, we still have our bounds, and then this is gonna become one plus two. The sum, we'll use k equal to one, and then we'll have just cosine k of u. And this whole thing right here is gonna be multiplied by this cosine u over two, du over here. And then from here, what I wanna do is I actually wanna just deal with this one right here, is I can distribute this over to the cosine and break this off into a separate integral. So if we have another integral, let's distribute the one half to it. Okay, we still have the same bounds. And this is just gonna be one times cosine u over two, so we're just integrating cosine u over two. So this is gonna be another integral, that, so this is gonna be another easy integral that we can do really quick. 
So taking care of this, we're gonna have one half in front integrating cosine u over two. That's just gonna be sine u over two. But we need to remember the one half for the u over two here, bring out a two in the numerator. That's gonna cancel with this, and we just need to evaluate this from zero to pi. Well, sine at zero is just zero. Plug in pi here, sine of pi over two, and this whole piece right here is just gonna be one. And now at this point, we have this sum over here that I have in parentheses, but the parentheses aren't really doing anything because we can just think about it as multiplying this into every term. That's not gonna change anything. And so I can basically just remove the parentheses on here because that's not really doing anything. And then what I can do is multiply this one half into the two and these can just cancel off. And then here what I can do now that we have these together, I can just use the different angle formula for cosine on here. And so when we do that, what's gonna happen is this just becomes one half, the difference of the angles and the sum of the angles. So let's write it as cosine of x, sorry, of k minus one half u. And if the other term is gonna be plus, the sum of the angles, so it's gonna be cosine k plus one half. So before we integrate, I think we can actually just kind of expand this out and see what's happening. We're starting our k value, our first k value is gonna be one. We're gonna have a one half in front of all this stuff. So like for the first value, plugging in k as one here, this is gonna be cosine one half u. And then for the next term, k is still one, but now we have one plus one half. So the second term is gonna be cosine three halves u. And then when k is two, you're gonna get, this is gonna be two minus half, you're gonna get another cosine three halves u. And then the next one's gonna be cosine five halves u. And we keep going, let's write a couple more terms. So we'll have another, when we have k equal to three, we're gonna have another cosine five halves u. And this pattern is just gonna repeat on the odd, the numerator is gonna be the odd number over two. And this is gonna go all the way to 10, 11. So for the last couple terms, we look at 10, 11 as 20, 22 over two, and you subtract a half, so this is gonna become cosine 2021 20, over two. And then for the very last term, we're gonna end up with cosine of 2023 20, over two u. But then what we can notice is almost all the terms are duplicated, like cosine three halves over u, this is gonna be, we have two copies of this. Cosine five halves over u, we have two copies of this. Cosine seven halves u, everything's gonna have two copies except for this one, and this last one. So what I can do is kind of put the integral back in here and think about integrating this whole thing, even though of course we're not gonna integrate all the terms, but we're gonna have one half out front, then integrating this, you're gonna have two sine one half u. Integrating here, you have a two in front, this is gonna become two thirds sine three halves u. Then for this one, we're gonna have two, two over five, sine five over two u. Then coming all the way to integrating this last term, this is going to become 2 over 2023 20, sine 2023 20, over 2u. Okay, so now we're almost there. We just need to evaluate. And before I do that, let's just use this one half because we've got twos in everything. So let's distribute in the one half and we can cancel with a two in everything here, here, and even here. This will become a one here. And then you just notice we have all sine terms. So when you evaluate zero, they're all going to zero, and this isn't gonna matter. And then let's see what happens when we evaluate it pi. Like this first one's gonna become sine pi over two, so this is gonna be one. Then here we're gonna have two thirds sine of three pi over two, that's gonna be a minus one. Then here we have two over five, this is gonna go back to one again. And the sine is just gonna keep changing like this for all these terms. Then we're gonna have like two over seven times minus one this term here at pi is gonna be minus one, and so this is gonna be here a minus one over 2023. 20, and then at this point, you can almost see the pattern. We have like minus two thirds, plus two fifths, minus two over seven. The only thing is this first term, we have a one, and this last term, we have a one in the numerator. So like these first two, so actually the first term and the last term don't work, but that's where we go back to the stuff we found earlier, is if I take this one and add it here to this one, then this here, this is gonna become a two now. And then if I take minus one over 2023 20, and subtract it from minus one over 2023, 20, this one here, this is gonna become a two as well. And then that way, this whole thing really cleans up because then I can take a two out of everything and just factor it in front and this is gonna become one minus two over three plus two over five minus two over seven, all the way to this last term, which is just gonna be minus one over 20, 20, oh shoot. But then this allows me to clean everything up as we've got a two in everything. I can factor a two in front 
And then what we're going to have is it's going to become 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7. Everything has an odd number in the denominator all the way to this last one, which is going to be 1 over 2023. And actually, I don't have a way to simplify it the way it is right here. So this is actually the final solution, just the way it is, this big, long sum. But what I thought I would do, because it's kind of ugly, is let's see if we can get a nice estimate for this. And now the problem in getting an exact solution for this is this right here, this is not an infinite series. Of course, it stops there at 2023. So we can't really use infinite series on there, except for it's a pretty big number. So I really can do a pretty good job of estimating with the infinite series. So 2023 is not infinite, but it's actually a pretty large number. So this is gonna be, I can actually do a pretty good estimate using power series on this. And we'll notice the similarity of this thing to the power series for Arctan. The power series for Arctan is just gonna be x minus x cubed over three. You could look at this as an x to the one over one if you want just to see the pattern plus x to the five over five, minus x to the seven over seven, et cetera. And again, where the power series is gonna be going all the way to infinity where this is not. But then notice this right here, if we just look at arctan of one, so if you just plug in one everywhere here, now you have one minus one over three plus one over five, exactly what we have right here. But for arctan of one, we actually have the exact value for this. This is gonna be just pi over four. So for a pretty good estimate of our solution, I can take pi over 4, plug it in here. 2 times pi over 4 just gives me this estimate of pi over 2. I should actually change this to, it's not equal, it's approximate. So, so pi over 2 is pretty good. I think I did plug it into Wolfram Alpha and it was something like 1.57, but I don't, I don't have the value from Wolfram Alpha, but I think it was around 1.57. Okay, anyway, there you have it. Really interesting problem from Vienna 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.